Hey guys, this is Michael from NWA3D, and today we're going to talk about how to tighten our Y-axis build plate. Now this is for those of you that do not have a concentric nut under the build plate. Your method is rather easy. You should be able to use your double-sided wrench in order to tighten and loosen it. Now for the other case, some have printers that do not have the concentric nut, and I'm going to go over the process of how to use that. So first, we'll cover the materials that we need. In front of me, I have the printer I want to tighten the build plate on, or this area right here. And then I have the double-sided wrench included with the toolkit. I have the largest Allen key in the toolkit. And then I have the second smallest Allen key of the toolkit. So first, I'm going to turn my printer around. And we're going to unplug two of these wires. So we're going to be focusing here on this back portion. And the first thing I'm going to take off is this Y-axis motor plug-in. So right down here, I'm going to go ahead and unplug it just by pulling it out of the port. I'm also going to do the same for this same limit switch that is right next door and do the exact same method. Just pull on the white tab. Sometimes it's a little tough and it should clip right out. So now I have those two loose and I should be able to take off my motor and with it, the build plate. So next I'm going to take that smaller of the two Allen keys and I'm going to loosen the two screws that reside right inside of this area. I'm going to move the camera a little bit just to get you a bit closer. So inside of this area, we will have two of these screws in order to take off the motor. So first what I'm going to do is loosen each one. I shouldn't need to take these entirely off. All I should need to do is loosen them enough for the T-nuts in the back to let go. So I'm just going to turn about one time around. Should do the trick. And then I'm going to be able to loosen it. So here I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of the guardrails here and then turn it to the side to release the loop from the motor. So now we have the belt and it should just be looping over here and I'm going to slide the bill plate off the back. There we go. So I'm running into a bit of a problem. I am going to have to take off the Y limit switch in order to completely remove the back the build plate. So I'm going to go and do that now. So I'm going to loosen each one of these. And those also have T-nuts so once loosened it should immediately come off. So I'm going to set that to the side as well. Now I should be able to slide my build plate all the way off. As long as I take my belt off of the front tab. So I went ahead and took off the front tab of the belt right here. And then I should be able to slide it all the way off the back. There we go. And it might take a little bit of effort in order to get these wheels off of our B track here. I'm going to turn the printer around again. Now one thing we would like to avoid is clipping these. We do not want to loosen the belt from this bill plate and we want to keep it in between the V track here. So all I did was simply pull it all the way off the back and then kind of tip it over. So what we're trying to access is each of these three wheels to tighten the space in order to make this nice and fit. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the bigger of the two Allen keys and go ahead and tighten each of these. So I'm going to loosen the portion at first just by putting the Allen key here and then putting our wrench on the nut on the inside. It's the wrong size, so make sure you use the smaller of the two sides for the wrench. Put it on your nut on the inside, like so, and then we're going to loosen it. So we should only have to turn it a small amount. You'll notice now that this wheel is loose and able to move. And we're going to do that for each of these three points. So I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for these next two. That 
one's loose now too, just barely. Now the final and third one. So I've had a couple of problems trying to keep my wrench on these nuts. They may be a little hard, have patience, and you should be able to get all of them. All right. So now I have each of the three wheels loose and they should be able to move just slightly. So now we're going to push them in and then re-tighten each spot. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be this top corner. I'm going to push it in and then hold the nut at the bottom. So push it in, place this on the inside of the nut like so. Hold down with one hand and tighten with the Allen key. Make sure you tighten it enough so it does not come loose again and then move on to the one right next to it. So again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting the wrench on the small nut on the inside and then tightening from the outside. Remember, as you tighten, to push down onto the wheel so that we do have a tighter fill plate afterwards. There we go. That's nice and tight as well. Now, finally, I'm going to flip this over and do the exact same thing. You may not be able to see me, but I am putting, again, the wrench on the inside and then tightening from the outside. All right, that is my last and final wheel to tighten, and it is nice and tight. That should have closed this gap that we have in between these, and then we can reassemble the printer. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to move the belt to where the bill plate is centered all the way at the back. Then I'm going to bring the bill plate back up, like so. Take a little bit more of that slack out. I'm tipping it to one side to get the inside wheel in and then allowing it to fall on the other two sides to put it back into the tracks. There we go. I just finished putting it on the track. Now it doesn't have much room to work with. So first I'm going to loop the belt around the bearing here in the front and then pull it so that I can move the bill plate towards the very front of the machine. So now I have all this extra slack and the bill plate is on the tracks. If you would like to test if it is loose or not, you can grab right here and try and move this bottom acrylic. If the bottom acrylic with the adjustment knobs does not move, then you should be good and you can reassemble. Make sure to check this before you reassemble so you know you don't need to tighten those three wheels again. So now that I have the bill plate on the V-Track, I'm going to go ahead and put the motor and the limit switch back on. So first, the limit switch. Oh. 
So I'm going to turn these sideways so that they will fall into each of the tracks. I like to leave the nut a little bit of room in order to spin inside of the V track. I'm going to push it all the way to the front. And then using the smaller Allen key, I'm going to go ahead and tighten both of those. When tightening your limit switch, make sure that the T-nuts on the inside do turn to 90 degrees in order to hold this steady and in place. So I now have my limit switch back on and I can put on my motor at this point. So the first thing I will want to do with the motor is put the belt around the tooth gear, just like slow. Make sure your T-nuts are rotated to match the V-tracks and then slide it into place. Now the final thing I want to make sure of is that this belt is nice and tight, so I'm going to go ahead and put my finger in between the motor and the limit switch and push outwards and then start to tighten. As I tighten, I should see the T-nuts turn 90 degrees to lock into place. If you do not see the T-nut right here, for instance, turn 90 degrees, you can always back it off a little bit more and then try to retighten it. There we go. Now it lined up. Now I'm going to just secure this into place just lightly and then start to tighten the bottom. If you notice, I am still able to move the motor up and down. This is so that we can adjust it here in a moment to make sure our belt is tight. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten the bottom down now and watch the T-nut turn 90 degrees. Perfect, and it did. Now I can still just barely move my motor, so I'm going to go ahead and push it out a little bit more as this is a bit loose for my belt. Push it out, and I'm going to also tilt it just slightly downwards in order to tighten up this area. So now that I have it at a good spot, I will finish by completely tightening the T-nuts. So I did about a final quarter turn in order to finish tightening and make sure they are nice and snug. There we go. Now my belt is nice and tight. My build plate does not wiggle anymore like it did before and it moved just fine. Now I can replace and plug in my limit switch just with the number 2 or Y into the port and finally I can plug in my Y motor. There we go. At this point in time your printer should be completely reassembled and you should be ready to level the build plate first and then go ahead and start your print.